Hi, this is Nana Stitching Lounge. So where has Rosie been? Hi there, this is Rosie and I am coming to you uh, from Nana Stitching Lounge where we talk about yarn and we talk about knitting and crocheting and all good things uh, stitching. So welcome, I come to you from Toronto, Ontario, Canada where I live in a condominium on the watcher with my husband, Nono, and uh, we are here on, uh, I guess it's Wednesday, May the 20th, and I have not broadcast since April 28th. I know. <laughs> no, no saying, what? So, I know. And so where have I been? No, no, have I been to the Caribbean lying on a beach? Uh, no. Uh, maybe I've been on a trip to Europe and uh, visiting the Colosseum. Uh, no. No. Maybe I've been on a train ride across Canada to the Rocky Mountains. Uh, no. No. No, I've been right here with Nono. Come say hi, Nono. There he is. There he is. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Just going outside for a cigar. There you go. Can you bring me a glass of wine before you go? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so usually I broadcast, or usually I tape before dinner, which I actually did. Um... But I uh, forgot to turn the sound on. Yeah, it's one of those nights. But anyway, so where have I been? Again, I've been just here in my condo, hanging out with my husband, Nono, and uh, just taking it easy, I guess. Um, I'm working at home, and I'm like doing my full job at home. I'm on the webcam all the time and it really is a pain so then when i'm done thank you cheers go get your drink everybody and your crocheting and knitting because i got a lot to talk about i haven't been on for three weeks so anyway so i find that after i'm uh, i work all day i just i don't feel like talking to a video camera <laughs> but i've been crocheting and knitting yes i've been knitting and i've been doing lots of stuff but I just, like I said, have not had the mojo to actually turn on the camera, which I've been having lots of problems with because, um, well, besides the fact that I forgot to turn on the sound, um, I don't know, I lost a battery and the battery I have doesn't last for more than 15 minutes. And anyway, it just seems that uh, it's uh, not going well. Anyway. So I did want to come on finally to say hello to everybody. It, we're starting to have some beautiful weather. Last weekend was our long weekend. In the UK, you call it a bank holiday. Um, we in Canada celebrate Queen Victoria's birthday, who was our British crown, I guess, head, head of state for a long time. And apparently, uh, well, her birthday is May 24th, but we celebrate I think it's the third Monday of every uh, May. And um, even in Britain, they don't celebrate Victoria Day. But Canada, we do. Which gives us a long weekend. It's also the weekend here that marks our uh, opening of cottages and the start, you know planting of flowers and that sort of thing. Cause it's and the cottages to the Brits because it means a totally different Oh, region. right, yeah. Yeah, I know. All kinds of things mean different things to everybody, but... So we, yeah, so we call it our May 2-4 weekend. And one of the other reasons is that May 2-4 also um, <laughs> stands for a case of beer, which has 24 in them, I know. So yeah, so we, that was last weekend, and I was going to tape then, and I didn't. I know, I just, I, you know, I've been working on um, doing some crocheting and knitting and just, being big lumps that's what Nono said in our video uh, a couple of videos ago when we were talking about our favorite things to do so but anyway I just want to check to make sure my sound is on and it is yay okay <laughs> otherwise I'm talking to myself again so okay so uh, what else do I have um, let's see I've been watching lots of um, 
lots of videos, lots of crochet videos. Uh, I watched, did you, everybody see Debbie, or sorry, Deborah from the 80s, and uh, Debbie, Canadian crotcheter. Um, that was pretty cool, Debbie. I think you should let Deborah out once in a while, because she's kind of like rad. <laughs> um, I did do a Zoom on Sunday, May 3rd, and I put that out there, and we got, we had quite a few people. I think there was maybe 12, 12 to 15, something like that, and we had people all over the world, so that was fun. Um, I just watched Jackie from Hooking in a Good Company, although she says Hooking in No Company, <laughs> but, and she says no matter how much yarn she thinks she has, she always has, she still seems to have more yarn. So I've been doing a lot of crocheting and knitting since January, which is almost six months, I guess. And I, like, I have been collecting all my ball bands. So I have, whoop, all of these. And I have all of these. Oh my gosh. And if I show you, I still have tons and tons of yarn. So, anyway. So I have not bought any yarn, actually, in a very long time. Um, but I think I told you the last time that instead, because one, I think it was like a Sunday night or something, I was going through Amazon and I bought my Chai Gu interchangeable needles, which I absolutely love. Um, I learned to crochet and knit around the same time. I did a lot of knitting back in the past. Um, mostly blankets um, and um, so these are the interchangeable needles so you have um, the different needle sizes these are four inch needles and then they come with interchangeable um, uh, what does it come with I'll show you I think most of you know these are the the um, different uh, cables the different set of cables so you have the large cables and the small cables and it comes also with this um, chai chow gu um, so you can measure the different sizes and it also comes with these little um, stoppers which is really convenient and these little things that you stick in the needle and it tightens it to the cable so it never falls off so these are quite of an, an investment, but I mean, these are amazing. The, um, the points are beautiful. They're not too pointy. I mean, they're pointy enough, but they're, you know, you're not going to hurt yourself with it or anything. So um, just love them. Anyway, Chai Gu. If you're going to start knitting, I suggest you order the Chai Gu's. Anyway. So what else do I have for you? Um, well, let's start with what am I wearing? So I am wearing um, from Craving Crochet. Let's see it. Um, see the back? It is Teresa from Craving Crochet. It is her um, How to Crochet an Easy Cardigan. So basically, it's two large hexagons. Um, it's not the granny stitch. It's actually a um, lacy stitch that she does. And um, you do the two, uh, the two hexagons, and then you sew them here on the sleeve and then up the middle of the back. But um, other than the color changes, you probably wouldn't be able to tell how I sewed it because it's I guess would be right where I do it I can't even tell where it was I think it's right here yeah um, all I did is I did two chain and I hooked into one of the holes and then two chain and then two chain and went back and back so um, and I did the same thing for the back so I'm gonna make you dizzy getting up and down so you can hardly see in the back seam so it turned out beautiful. So Teresa, great pattern. Um, now I used um, shawl and all. I have tons of these that I bought, God knows when. I think they were buy two, get one free, or buy one, get one free, or whatever, something like that. And um, this, is, this in here is called wind chime. 
So here's the ball band. I don't know if you can see that wind chime. And you can see there's a sparkle. So it's all these blues. So all in here is the wind chime. I don't know if you can see the sparkle. And then I, and so what I do, when I, I've done a few of these hexi cardies, um, and when I do them, I actually start both hexagons at the same time, and then I work one, and then I work the other, and um, especially if I think I'm going to run out of yarn, which I, I had a feeling, I had, I think, one and a half of these left over, I had done a shawl a long time ago, and um, so I, this is all I had left of this, and I don't think I could have done another round or at least not two rounds. I might have been able to do another round of one, but not the other. So I stopped. And then I thought, oh God, now what? Where, where am I going to find another shell in the ball that's, you know, to finish it off? And in my stash, deep in my stash, I found um, Soothing Blue. And so this is the Soothing Blue color. So it's a little darker. But it also has the, um, and, but it has no sparkle. So you can see the soothing blue here. Um, the sparkle kind of ended here. You can see, and then I started with the soothing blue, which came a little, came a little darker. And then, um, so I finished it off. And then I did a little um, double crochet band, a little, another band around here and one on the end. So I don't normally, when I do these, I normally, um, I decrease, not to make the this so big, but I thought for a summer sweater, I think it, uh, it, it's really nice because you don't, I usually decrease it because I usually wear my sweaters under coats and stuff, but this is more of a summer spring, so I don't have to wear a coat over it. And so it's kind of nice just to wear it this way, right? So that is my... How, uh, an easy cardigan from Teresa at Craving Crochet, and I'll leave the link down below. So what else have I done? So I was telling you I bought the Chai Goo needle, so I figured I'm going to start um, knitting again. And go get your drink. Cheers. So I'm, so I started knitting again, and I, um, you may have seen, I did, I showed you in my last video, um, a top I made, which I got more acquainted with different knitting stitches, holding the needles. I've been trying to teach myself continental because I, I usually, I do English style throwing, but, um, I've been, I can do, um, knit, the knit stitch continental really easy. And I find that it's great because it alternates the hand movements. And so I don't find my hands getting tired as much. Um, like when I, when I crochet, you do this and when you knit, it's, it's finer hand mo movements. But anyway, so I made the ranunculus sweater. And so here it is. So it is a top down. So you start with the collar and you start, you move top down. Then you split it for the sleeves here. Um, and then you just circle, and then you just knit in a circle. So it's all in a circle, and then you do a ribbing at the bottom, and you bind off. So I love top-down sweaters. I even crocheting, I love top-down. Um, so in knitting, I was looking for um, something that was easy. Now this is a pretty in the knitting community. It's pretty famous uh, knit um, sweater. Um, it's a bot pattern by, uh, her name is M Midori Heroes from Midori Knit Cafe Midori. And this is the picture. So it comes in various sizes and it's supposed to be done with fingering weight. Um, and kind of like a, a sweater you wear over a sundress or you wear sloppy. Now I made it a little bit more fitted. Now it comes with a lot of different sizes. And, it, and, and how to make different sizes, which is really cool. Um, so I think I made like the extra large. Here's some pictures of the extra large. So really cool. Um, like I said, pretty famous in the knitting community, the Renunculus, and I will post that below as well. 
Now I made this with the meandering serpentine from Loops and Thread and it is a yarn that's I think 90% acrylic, 10% uh, nylon. So it has a lot of give, um, but it also, it's not really nice yarn, I have to say. I mean, I've been, I've washed this, but it's not very forgiving. So let me show you the back where I change colors. It um, didn't turn out that great. So that's why I'm not even wearing it. But you can actually sort of see where I change colors. I don't know if you can. Yeah. So it doesn't forgive well, and, and I didn't change colors very nicely. And then even in the front here, there's a hole. And anyway, I mean, it's okay to, you know, to hang for a first knit, learning how to knit, following these patterns, trying to figure out how to do it. I mean, it's, it fits okay. Um, I'll wear it in another episode, but, um, but it's, it's, I want to say cheap yarn. It, it, like it wasn't like when I bought this was all on sale. So it was cheaper, like three ninety seven a skein or something, uh, a hank. But, um, I was, I you had some of this orange left over from the last project I did. And so I knew I was going to run out of it. So I just introduced this, um, pinky beige, um, and then I just kind of alternated and then ended with the pinky beige because I knew it was going to run out of it. Um, and then I did a little sleeve. This doesn't, it doesn't actually come with a little, um, rib sleeve, but I put that on anyway. It's okay. Uh, it turned out all right for, um, you know, uh, a first knitted sweater that I've done in a long time. Actually, I have pictures of my very first knitted sweater. It wasn't my first, but it was in like something like 30 years ago. I knit a sweater in the round, you know, an Icelandic sweater with lopy yarn, <clears throat> the worst wool. It was itchy. I'll, I'll put a picture right here, actually. So it, yeah, I made one for my ex-husband, I made one for his brother, and then I made this white one for me. I used the, actually the, the color work pattern. I made the kids when they were smaller. I just, I just used acrylic, but I used that color work chart for it. Um, so I've done sweaters before, um, just haven't done it recently. And um, there's just some actually really beautiful uh, patterns out there. Um, and uh, so I'm really enjoying trying to choose some patterns. So the next sweater I made, and I told you it was gonna be a long video, is called The Love Note. And I'll show you a picture, and then through the magic of TV, or magic of video, anyway, I will go put it on, anyway. So this is, it's called The Love Note. And it's by Tin Can Knits. And again, it is a top-down sweater. Um, it calls for DK weight yarn. And when I saw it right away, I was, I was deciding whether to make this or whether to make the ranunculus in some knit yarn I had, knit crate yarn I had. So, um, and every and then I saw this in one of the knitting podcasts, the Love Note, and this again too is very famous tin can yarns. I'll put the the note down below, and I will show you what it looks like. And here it is. Isn't it turn out gorgeous? I have to. I this has to be my favorite favorite sweater I have ever made. So I'll show you. I'll stand up, and I'll show you. Um, all the, the ribbing around, so it goes all the way around. I don't know if you can see. Anyway, it goes all the way around. It did uh, lengthen a bit. Um, I had made it a little bit shorter, but it lengthened when I blocked it, when I soaked and blocked it. And um, the only thing that I'm not crazy about is that it is quite open, so I have to wear a tank underneath because um, it obviously shows everything, um, which the ranunculus actually is, even though it's lacy, it, it's not as, um, can't see through it as much, right? So this yarn, let me talk about this yarn. 
So you guys probably, if you've seen any of my videos, you've seen um, that I have a lot of knit crate that I've never used. And so I have paused my knit crate so that I could use up some of it. Um, I got two of these in a knit crate when you, one month. I can't remember if it was November, October or November. Um, and um, I ordered, I doubled down, so I have four of these, and I made this whole sweater with three. I have a whole ball left, a whole skein of, or hank left of this yarn. So this yarn is, colorway is Beauty Berry from Knit Crate, and it, it's 85% merino wool and 15% silk. And you can feel it is just so wonderful. I'm going to probably make a, I mean, this is my color, right? Um, I'm going to probably make a cowl for the winter with the rest of this because it's just so beautiful. And um, I'll come closer so you can see the way it is just really blocked nicely. Now, the neck, if you see the picture, it actually um, asks you to decrease um, and then close it up, but I'm not, I like my necks a little bit more open, so I didn't do that. I just left it the way it was. And you can make long sleeves or you can leave them short, but I, I just did up to the elbow, which I really like because it just kind of, anyway. So I am so pleased with this sweater, I can't even tell you. Um, I am definitely going to make another one. I just absolutely love it. But I have to say, ladies, there's something to be said about nice yarn. Because after I block this, you can tell, like, there's no, you know, there, there's no holes even where it was uneven or whatever. Like, you, you know, you can't see any of that. Whereas the, you know, this yarn here, like, it, it just doesn't close up. It, it, it's not forgiving like there's no nothing happens to this yarn you can wash it put it in the dryer and and nothing happens so yes that's my a love note and I just absolutely love it so what else so I have still been doing more crocheting so for those of you that uh, want to see more crocheting now I am doing a test knit and it is a test, sorry, a test crochet um, by, um, let's see, her name is Kara at KP Crochet Designs. And it's called the Sunny Days Cardi. And this is the yarn I'm using, which is a uh, Lamia Hobium di Diamond, it's called. It's a beautiful color. It's a... It says it's a worsted. It says it's a four, but it's really fine. It's not, I think I've shown this to you when I opened it, but it's pretty fine. It is a really strange yarn, I have to tell you. I mean, it is comprised of, I don't know why I bought it actually when I did, but anyway, 70% acrylic and 30% microfiber. So, when after uh, I'll show you this a little bit. I won't show you the whole thing because its pattern hasn't been released. Obviously, if I'm still testing it, but I'll show you a piece of it, and um, it is like stretchy. It's quite nice. I mean, it's nice, but it has like um like a fentex feeling. It's kind of it's it it's it's totally twisted. If you can see the twist. And so when you go to crochet it, it, um, it doesn't split, which I thought it would, but it, it um, anyway, it, it's going to be nice for the summer. It'll be a nice, it's a short sleeved cardi. Um, anyway, I'll show it to you when I'm done and she releases the pattern. But um, so I'm making, I'm testing her 2XL. Um, so it's going to be quite pretty, I think. So I will, so I am doing still crochet. If anybody's wondering, I'm not totally ditching crochet. Um, I'm actually going to do another video on um, comparing knitting and crocheting because I find that it's actually quite interesting, uh, the difference between the two. So um, what else am I doing? Oh, 
So I have some things that I've been on Ravelry and I've been looking at different patterns and I found this one pattern which I absolutely love that I'm definitely going to make. And it's called a crochet short sleeve pullover by Whitney Hayward, the Alara pullover. Anyway, I'll show it to you. Isn't that cute? That is, I mean, I, I won't wear, like, I'll make it longer, obviously. I'm not going to do a mini thing, whatever. But I just love this. I think it's a paid pattern. And I just thought that was so cute. So I'm going to, once I finish this test pattern, I'm going to start this one. It um, has a lot of charts, and it looks like it's uh, top-down, of course. Oh, it shows you... Um, show you the top of it which is really pretty and of course this is totally my style right so um yeah i'm gonna definitely start this so that's uh, i don't know what yarn yet i made i have a lot of karen cotton cakes so i might do it in a cotton so really nice and then um what else have I found? Oh, this one here. This was another top-down knit pattern, which is called the Whitmore. And again, this is a pretty um, interest, like top-down, um, but it's a heavier one. So I might might be in the in the winter, in the fall, I might do this one. So I don't know if you can see it's kind of blowing out, but it's really pretty too. So I'm yeah I'm really enjoying mixing up the crocheting and the knitting and I'm uh, having a ball um, so I've been busy I've been doing a lot of stuff um, I've been watching like I said all my my friends in crochet land and um, Debbie and Lynette and Jackie and Rose and just to name a few and I keep I watch a lot of them uh, and I've been going to some of Lisa's lives, and uh, so, but I also started watching, um, I wanted just to mention these two podcasts, because they're Canadian, and I just, I actually went back and binged watched all of them, and they're knitting podcasts, but um, the first one is called Fleece and Harmony, and it's, they're two sisters named Kim and Jennifer, and they, um, bought a farm to uh they they're herders of sheep or they're shepherds yeah shepherds so they have sheep and they bought a farm in prince edward island which is a province in canada on the east coast so they were both big executives working for big companies one in downtown montreal one in in uh, toronto and they just left their my one's my age i think a little bit younger and then one's a little younger um, left their high corporate jobs and bought a farm out in PEI and they raise sheep and they also um, make their own they spin their own wool and they sell it so I just I was so enthralled by their stories and they talk about the stories on the farm and the stories of their life which is amazing so much fun to listen to and then they show what's in their in their yarn um, what they're spinning and the colors and the different things they're making and knitting and stuff so Love Fleece and Harmony, and again, I will put their uh, their channel uh, link down below because I just I just found that you know everybody has the dream, right? I'm just gonna leave, you know, go to Green Acres, you know, goodbye city life, Green Acres here. I, yeah, I won't sing for you, but anyway, that's the kind of thing I think about, right? But um, lovely, lovely ladies, and I've joined actually. They have uh, a knitting night on a Monday or I think it's Monday or Tuesday nights they have knitting nights and if you subscribe to their channel they send you these emails and they invite you to their zoom their knitting night zoom so I have gone once um, so that's been a lot of fun it's really cool the other one I've been watching is from London Ontario Canada and their name is their names are oh my gosh Carrie Patty and June and they are the Forest City Girls and um, because London Ontario is also known as the Forest City and between the three of them I just love watching what they make at some points they actually may all make the same things but they use different color yarns different types of yarn so it's kind of neat to see you know their their uh, finished products or the finished objects the same pattern but different ways of doing it so really really nice ladies uh really cool and again they're only a couple hours from toronto which is really cool and um the third 
uh, knitting channel I've been watching is called Knitting Vicariously. Um, it's from Britain. So Carolyn is over up upon living in London. She's Scottish but lives in London. And uh, she's a little younger than me. And uh, she makes the most beautiful sweaters. And uh, she takes you on her trips to different fiber festivals. She takes you on her trip to Rhinebeck and all those things. So I've watched, um, I think it's her channel is called Dunder, Dunder Knit. Dunder Knit. Knitting Vicariously with Dunder Knit. And so I will link her out as well. So lots of fun. Been watching lots of YouTube between my uh, work, which is taking up way too much of my time. But um, got to get that done too, unfortunately. And um, we have also been uh, fixing up our condo. We've been painting and putting, you might notice some changes around, but we are staging it put it up for sale. So um, that is going to happen eventually. We started this process pre-COVID and of course, you know, Nono and I would be the only idiots trying to sell something during COVID when nobody can see your condo. You can't go see anywhere else you might want to live. So anyway, so I'll let you know what happens there, but we're not in any hurry. We just thought, eh, back in February, the market was great. So we thought we, we would try to sell and move a little bit further out of the city. Who knows, right? So that's all I have, I do believe. Um, I am uh, in my next podcast. I think I will be doing a giveaway because I have not done a giveaway in a long time. Um, I will uh, put something together and we shall chat about that. Um, and I think that's it. So I hope Everybody is having, staying safe and having a good time at home now that, and you know, some of the shops are opening, so maybe you can go and do some shopping, um, other than online, of course, because I've been doing lots of that, but not yarn. Um, and um, so stay safe. Thank you for watching. Thank you to all my returning friends, subscribers, and thank you to any new subscribers that may have come uh, to watch me. Please uh, press, if you like what you see, press subscribe and the bell so you'll be notified of any uh, additional vi videos that I put out, which I promise is usually once a week, but didn't happen this time. So thank you everyone and we shall chat soon. Ciao for now.